what we're trying to do here with the, this exhibition right in front is to almost to give the public a voice that's a cultural voice, not a scientific voice, not a political voice, but a cultural voice that says, wait a minute, it's almost emotional. You know, we, we care. We actually want you to find solutions. There is huge public concern on this issue now, and they have to recognize that. And, and in a way, I think the, the way that the public express their concern is probably culturally. And I think having this kind of cultural, artistic, creative, highly imaginative, um, 34 artists from around the world saying something is great. You know, it's a big, powerful voice that has media. You know, we will attract media, we will attract world attention, and that's important. I think that this is, uh, shows that the artistic community uh, take in the issue you know, seriously and think it's important. I think that if you can bring about a, a cultural shift in people's minds, then that's the way artists can work. They work within culture and they work visually. It's not a lot of statistics that I think people find hard to take on board sometimes, but I think there's a passion that artists have and there's a way they can communicate with that and hopefully make change. Artists are sensitive people that, that are totally immersed within the milieu of their time and uh, I think it's, I think, the background condition of most uh, creative uh, consciousness is working today. And some, I think, have made work that is directly referent to it. And others, I think it comes in more subtle ways. We've split the exhibition into, into, into four basic categories. One of the categories is disaster. I mean, why is it that humanity is so obsessed with the notion of disaster? If you look at Hollywood movies, you know, the bigger the disaster, the more exciting it is. If you look at the climate change movies, most of them have been about disaster. You know, why is it our cultural obsession with disaster? So there's some fantastic work. There's a bomb that one artist has made. It's a fantastic kind of globe, a golden globe, and it's scheduled to blow up in 2000 and to 2104, so basically 100 years from now, this thing will explode. Um, you know, wow, what a notion. And most of the other ex part of the exhibition is deeply optimistic, saying we can engage with this. The positive things that come out of this exhibition is, I hope, a celebration of a, of a well, I guess our everlasting enchantment with this place that we call Earth on which we live and on which we depend. The, the paintings that you see behind you here are called nature paintings and they're created by nature rather than me painting nature. These are uh, chemical reactions where nature itself has blended and, and combined the chemicals together. So it's about the artistic idea of instead of trying to control the canvas, instead of trying to put parameters on it of, of what's beautiful and what's not, it's allowing nature to do what it does best to try and develop a kind of synthesis with nature whereby me and it are working in union, which is really what the solution to all the climate change problems are. It's not really about saving this particular thing or lobbying to try and continue our way of life, which isn't healthy for the planet. It's about changing our philosophical concept of what it is to be human and to live on the planet and to use resources. I think this piece is all about life. I think this piece is about growth. I think this is about, you know, about trees and, you know, how we, how we re relate to trees, how trees can be extraordinarily, are extraordinarily beneficial to the atmosphere. This work was made in 1992 for the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, which I attended. And this was shown at the Museum of Modern Art in Rio de Janeiro at, at the same time. Uh, it's extraordinary to me that we've got so little of the job done between 20 years ago and now. And it was urgent then, it's now crisis. My message is to say, you know, do you have the courage to make policies that are not necessarily for your benefit in the short term, as your political party may or may not get in on them? but show some kind of courage and do something for the long term, for humanity in general. And those kind of uh, decisions may not be something that you will in your lifetime see the benefit of, but mankind in general will. The earth is still a beautiful place. Uh, we have to learn that we are in its hands uh, as much as uh, 
it being in ours. They have to come out with a deal. They, they has to be something there. Lock, lock them in till yeah, there's a that's deal. Yeah, I say. I think yeah. stay in there until you've got it sorted. Yeah. We need you to do that. That's what I'd like to it, say. What we stand to lose is just too great. You know, we're a fantastic animal. We're a fantastic culture that we've established over the last, what, 200 years? It is brilliant. We've just got one downside, and that's dealing with energy, and we should be able to solve that. Do the right thing and lead us to a responsible, carbon-neutral future.